Hi, we're Josh and Vanessa, a Canadian couple driving our 1994 Toyota Land Cruiser from BC, Canada down to Argentina. But this isn't just a highlight reel. We're here to show you all the ups and downs, the lessons learned, and the memories made along the way. We are destined for wild. We have crossed into Costa Rica. It took us about three hours to do it. Um, everything went smoothly. It was just very busy and backed up. There's lots of tour buses coming through at the same time. So there was like crossing into Costa Rica, there was probably like 50 plus people in front of us. Yeah. And it was also the same for getting our exit stamp in Nicaragua. But we got it all done and now we're driving to Liberia and we're going to do a few little quick errands in the town before we hit the coast. Our first night in Costa Rica was in a quiet bay along the coast. Since it was a Saturday, we were neighbors to many locals soaking up the last hours of the sun. The nice thing about this spot is that you could pull up pretty much anywhere and camp. We quickly learned that this was a common trend along the coastline and we were stoked to keep beach hopping along the way. The next beach was even more secluded and just as beautiful. It also came along with some noisier but really cute neighbors. some guac and chip action. This is something I'm excited about. This guacamole was from one avocado. It was like this big. The pit was this big, like my fist. It's insane. It was probably yeah. one of the biggest avocados I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. And it was like perfectly ripe. So not mad about that. But yeah, that's a lot of guac for one avocado. I feel like we get really cheaped out back home because they're like tiny. Anyways, still enjoying the beach, having a good time. And there's kids playing there. More people showed up. I think most people are just kind of here for the day because it's a Sunday. So I have a feeling it's going to clear out quite a bit. Um, on iOverlander, the spot, uh, the people that posted the spot said that like it was like just them, like it was really quiet. So I think it'll be a nice night. Tamarindo, uh, Costa Rica. Yes. We were last time we were here was 2019. 20 no, no 2020. 2020. We actually we got back from Costa Rica, and like a week later is when lockdown happened. Yeah, for COVID lockdowns in Canada. Yeah, so that was pretty crazy. Yeah, we went for our honeymoon in Costa Rica in this town, Tamarindo in February? Was it February? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, like end of February 2020. And then yeah, we get home and then literally locked down. But we came back with the truck this time and we drove here, but we're really excited to be seeing this spot again. There was a lot of really cool restaurants and shops that we saw last time and we're gonna hit them up again. Yeah, there was a lot of spots that we saw and really enjoyed. There's a few things we didn't get to see oh, around the rest of Costa Rica. So that's one of the big reasons why we wanted to come back and actually do this trip. So it's pretty cool to be back here. Yeah. So we're just pulling into town. So we're stopping by one of the surf shops and there's an off-road shop I wanted to check out. And then uh, we'll head into town. Just wandering around. Just had coffee. And uh, we're gonna see what's all changed since the last time we were here. Yeah. Just looking uh, to get a little bit new stuff. Some things that were abandoned before are now cleaned up and like running again. So it's pretty sweet. It's been interesting to see what's happened over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. You like your tacos? Yeah. Very good. How many times did we come here when we were on a honeymoon? I think like five. <laughs> Not more. Love tacos here. We came here almost every night. Seriously, some of the best tacos we ever had. 
like in we went to Mexico like recently. So very good. Very comparable to stuff in Mexico. Very much on par. Yeah. Thank you so much. Track. Thankfully, we're in the dry season still, which means there's no rain, means the rivers are smaller and not as deep. So now it's a good time to be driving around here because like next month is when the rainy season starts and that's when it's like impassable to drive through most of these rivers. <laughs> checking out the shops and the beach. Uh, we are gonna keep on driving though today because we are in a little bit of a time crunch and there's a lot more of Costa Rica we wanna see. We do love this area and the western coast, but we're gonna head inland. set up for camp for the night. Um, it definitely takes a little finessing trying to find a good level spot for us. So Josh is just trying to find the most level spot for us to back into. We are on Lake Arenal. I think over in that direction you can't see right now, there is uh, the volcano Arenal. So we're in this area because there's a few spots around the nearby surroundings that we want to see within like an hour or so of each other. So we're gonna do that, next, do that next few days and then we'll continue on towards Panama. <laughs> I totally missed it on the camera but Josh just hit the drop off and slipped. <laughs> Is it good? Yeah. Yeah? It's very shallow and then it's not. <laughs> We are on our way to Rio Celeste today. Uh, we camped on Lake Arenal last night and we dipped in the lake this morning. We kind of tidied up the truck a little bit and kind of did some cold remedies for Josh as he's not been feeling good for the past couple days, been having a nasty cold. Uh, so we're just trying to get rid of it. Um, 
yeah, we're going to Rio Celeste. I think it'll be really cool. It's one of the things I'm really excited to see. I don't know how busy it's gonna be because I just realized right now that it's Saturday and we're getting there around 11, so it might be hella busy. We'll see. Fingers crossed that's gonna be okay. We made it to Rio Celeste. We are just starting the trail walk, so we'll take you along with it. Um, I'm really hoping we see some cool animals. We just saw Koti back there. Um, I'm hoping to see a sloth. I'm really hoping to see a sloth. I would love to see a sloth, so maybe we'll see one. We'll keep our eyes peeled for you guys. Very beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool how blue the water is. What does it look like the color of? Blue popsicle. Yeah. Yeah. I think it looks like Kool Aid if Kool Aid had like a like a bright tropical punch flavor or something. This is the color of the popsicle. That's like the uh, uh, freezy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's like a freezy. It's a freezy color. Oh my gosh, I want to jump in that so bad. Unfortunately, there's no swimming allowed in the river within the national park. It's so inviting though, I really wish we could. But that's okay. It's still a be beautiful spot to admire. Now we gotta go all the way back up the stairs. There's another one back there, but that one's right up front. You can get here. <laughs> really? He's ugly. <laughs> Got a beautiful spot on the lake again. Just farther down than where we were last night. Uh, we're trying to organize the roof box a little bit because we have a lot of stuff that's just kind of jammed in random places in the truck so we're like why don't we use the box better so we're doing that right now and we're just chilling enjoying this beautiful view i don't know Right now we are at um, Falcon Aramel National Park and we're doing a hike to the lava fields right now and most of it is walking through the jungle so we're like trying to take our time and be quiet so that we can hopefully see some animals. So far we've seen a lot of li lizards. There's a dragonfly right there. We are hiking, taking our time, and trying to be quiet so we can see animals. We were left feeling a little underwhelmed by the end of this trail. After visiting other volcanoes along the trip, we had high expectations for this one. Don't get me wrong, Volcano Al Renal is an incredible place, but we were comparing it to what we've seen before. For example, a very active Volcano Fuego, comparing it to a dormant Arenal. We still saw some incredible views along this trail, such as this very old tree that definitely humbled us while admiring its stature. It was a reminder to enjoy what we have in front of us and to keep our expectations in check. This tree is 400 years old. That is so crazy. I'm so amazed by this. This is huge. Once we finished our visit to Arenal National Park, we made our way back to the west coast and made a very necessary pit stop along the way. So we're at a bridge, Duchess is off the highway going to one of the beach towns here and it just has a bunch of crocodiles just chilling underneath. There's one right there, there's a bunch more over there, but if you ever drive through here you gotta go. 
Oh, there's more down that way too. This is so cool. This is very random. It's super random. <coughs> Number 10 of them here. The next camp spot quickly became a favorite of the trip to this point. I'm sure you can see why we loved it so much. more than one day at one spot unless we really like it so this is a good one got really sunburnt got very sunburnt but we explored all the way down to the point there and it was very nice good relaxing day saw a lot of hermit crabs which is one of my favorite things ever so I was a happy girl this beach was very quiet as well which is nice yeah there's like hardly anyone here like there have been surfers coming throughout like the high tide and low tide but like it's really, it's really chill. Like there might have been maybe five other people here the whole day. Yeah. Which, uh, not mad about. Yeah. Also, it rained last night. It poured rain last <coughs> night, and we stayed and dried inside. Stayed dry inside the tent, which is a big deal for us because we've never actually camped in the rain yet. So that was a win that we stayed dry. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was definitely that was one thing we were worried about is because we were like, oh. We've never camped in the rain, in the truck anyways. Yeah. But tropical storm, still stay dry. <laughs> so, good job, Camp Deck. Good job, Camp Deck. Thanks, Eric. Okay. We're hiking to Nakuya, I don't know how to pronounce it. Some waterfalls. And it's four kilometer hike one way. And we're really feeling it. We're really tired. It's really humid. It's all uphill. All uphill. There's trucks that can drive you to the waterfalls, but it was like extra $30 each to do it. So we're like, we can walk. They're like, it's only four kilometers. It's fine. It's nothing. Should've got the freaking trucks. We could have driven our truck, but we didn't know how to access the road to this. That would be cool. But also, don't know if we're allowed to drive up here ourselves. So, we're hiking. Because we're cheap. But it'll be worth it. It's gonna be cool. We're cheap and out of shape. That's not like a good combination. No, it's not. But slowly getting in shape, right? <laughs> Trying to cross into Panama, not tomorrow, but the day after, ideally. So it gives us enough time to drive to the city and also stop at a few spots along the way in Panama that we wanted to see. 
because we need to be there to get all the stuff prepped for the truck shipping. Yeah, we have to get some paperwork all done in Panama City. Uh, need to get the truck inspected. Need to clean the truck out, obviously. Pack our bags, of course, to fly to Cartagena. And then there's just a few little odds and ends we need to do with the truck yeah. before we're able to get it shipped. Yeah. So, gotta try and get that done over the next couple of days. We need to get the truck cleaned as well. Yeah. So, hoping to find a car wash that we can go to. It seems like almost everywhere in Central America, you just drop your car off and they wash it. Yeah. And you leave it with them. We kind of want to wash it ourselves. But I don't know if that exists here. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Coming up in our next episode. <laughs>